This is a tale of friendship, heartbreak, and loss. This is Sierra's story. Sierra is an Irish immigrant. She used to live in a small two-bedroom house with her, her six children, her husband, in Queenstown, Ireland. She recently just turned 26 at the time of this story. Her husband's name was Sidevan Murphy. Their children were Kelsey, Ava, Anna, and her only son, Connor, who was four years old. In 1850, because of the Great Famish, she feared for her family. Because of the famine, there were riots and thefts. They would do anything for some food. So, a couple years later, after her 26th birthday, she packed up her and her family and boarded the SS Aspazima. Due to her inability to pay first class fare, they were put in the ship's steerage room. There, they were crowded with hundreds of other passengers and crew workers. The ship could hold over 1,068 passengers, however, conditions were practically unbearable. It was always loud, everyone was either sick from motion sickness or a rapidly spreading disease called typhus. So understandingly so, it stank. On the ship, Sierra meets a man who seems to be very sick from typhus. Bored and motion sick, she begins to talk to him. He claims his name is Grant. It was revealed his only wish was to see America and get his daughter to Boston, New York. Sierra lets Connor play with Allie, the man's daughter. They're around the same age. The man describes how his family had been separated in order to get safely to America. Sierra sympathizes and listens, and slowly they become close friends during the long days. Fill the air as many passengers see sunlight for the first time in days, and they are finally able to breathe some fresh air. However, there are many grieving sobs as well after the outbreak on the ship. Many people are and currently are dying on that ship. Sierra and her family continue onwards towards the Boston port's entry point. Their joy does not last long as they get past the first checkpoint. Her son, Connor, after being inspected by a nurse, has apparently caught typhus after playing near Grant with Allie. Sierra describes her grief once she realizes her foolishness for not noticing sooner. Her and her family are retained. Her son is taken away by the workers. Her husband, in a late journal, describes how angry his wife was, screaming incoherently to the workers. Devastated from being separated from her son, she sits in the prison for about two days. There was only a window to look out of, and only old books to read. They weren't even allowed to leave. The women did not get to see their male family members, and the women are only allowed a couple free hours to walk around the Boston Point. Not only this, but Sierra is threatened constantly by some of the workers. They claim that they would put her back where she came from. She meets some other women who've been there way longer than she has. Sierra confides to one of the women to get her son back, but there was no result. She meets Allie again, however, she's all alone. She tells Sierra that her dad has been retained. However, Allie knows exactly where he is. Sierra is delighted and hatches up an elaborate plan to get her son and her husband back and to escape. Sierra manages to steal a nurse's outfit while having free time around the point's laundry room. She quickly changes into the nurse's outfit, then she hurriedly goes back to find her daughters and Allie. She leads the girls to the clinic before fetching the boys as well. She speaks no words on this endeavor, afraid that her native accent will give her away. Sierra meets with Grant again, and he is reunited with Allie although briefly. Unfortunately, Grant doesn't have long. Sierra had written in her diary that day, 
He was a good man with a good heart. I hope that one day we will all be reunited. I quite see Grant as a brother, therefore my family. He saved our life that day, the day we tried to escape. We had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. I think the nurses were figuring us out. Knowing Sierra, her family, and Allie were running out of options, and that he had to get his daughter to safety, he bid Allie goodbye, as Sierra left to find Connor, her sick son. However, before Sierra could leave, Grant told Sierra that he entrusted her with his daughter. Sierra agreed to take Grant's daughter and promised to take good care of her. With that in mind, he makes a distraction by throwing his pillows at a nearby nurse and causing a riot. She writes, I remember when I had to leave. The resignation in his eyes. There was hope in there as well, but mostly sadness. His last words to me were, Bye, sister, in the worst English accent I've heard yet. The mission goes successfully, and Sierra and her family get to the city safely. For a while, they lived on the street. They had no money, no possessions. However, they did have each other, and that's what counted. However, there can't always be happy endings. Connor sadly passes away a few days later. The cold weather from January and his hunger did not help his case of epidemic typhus. She has trouble affording a home, but manages to afford one after her husband received a job at the factory. The locals and the men at the factory are hostile to her and her husband, among the other Irishes who are stealing their jobs and now the outbreak of typhus swarming the streets of Boston. Because of this, her and her family go into hiding for a year or so. After a while, things settle down and they can finally afford a house and food to eat. Allie goes on to be a young poet, even getting a poem published in the local newspaper. Sierra has another son two years later. She names him Grant.